fellows in training. I'm here with Dr. Moran, an associate professor and interventional cardiologist at the Medical University of South Carolina. And we're talking about women in cardiology and also when they are looking into training for interventional radio, uh, cardiologists or EP. As we know, less than 5% of women uh, fellows in cardiology go into this field. And we want to hear from you, what do you think are the barriers for women cardiologists going into uh, interventional and EP? Excellent question. It's, thank you for um, giving me this opportunity. So happy to be here. So you're absolutely right. Less than 5% of women um, cardiologists choose electrophysiology or interventional cardiology. The biggest reason is a um, lot of uh, misinformation that there's too much radiation exposure and that would inhibit or prevent them from having a successful pregnancy or the work-life balance issues can be very difficult as an electrophysiologist or as an interventional cardiologist and according to me these are all misinformations because I have three children and they're all no one has three eyes in four years they're all normal <laughs> so uh, it, it can be done has been done and I'm sure will continue to be done in the future too. So can you tell us a little more about radiation safety and women going into interventional cardiologists NEP? All right. So in general, the radiation safety for men and women are about the same if you are not pregnant. Okay. Once you get pregnant or even if you think you are pregnant, you don't have to announce to the whole world because you're not sure what's going to happen to the pregnancy. You can have a private meeting with your program director and then with your radiation safety officer. Every cat lab has that or every EP lab has that. And then they give you a second radiation badge for you to wear behind your skirt, lead skirt. Okay, and with that, your radiation is monitored every month, and uh, usually the first two tri first trimester is the most sensitive period, and you can double lead during the first two trimesters. And by the time you get to the third trimester, and if your radiation numbers have been excellent during the first two trimester, you can just have a one kind of a one lead situation. Okay, there have been multiple women who have gone through interventional cardiology fellowship and electrophysiology fellowship without having radiation issues. That's because even though we think we are in long cases and we're having a lot of exposure, the lead is actually very effective. And when you're wearing two lead skirts to protect your uh, abdomen, it's even more effective. And most of the time, the radiation badge which you wear behind your lead skirt has little or no exposure. So in general, it's been shown to be very safe as long as you take the precautions, uh, collimation during your procedures and other practices which you will be taught during um, your training. My uh, humble request is don't be afraid. It's not, it's, not, it's been done before and there is a workaround and we can find a way. Your program will find a way for you. This is 2019. We don't need to be afraid of this anymore. That is great information. So Dr. Marin has great recommendations that it is done, it is possible. Um, so what about work-life balance? What are your tips in that area? So work-life balance does not depend on whether you are a general cardiologist or an interventional cardiologist or an electrophysiologist or a heart failure specialist. Your work-life balance depends on where you go and do your job. So if you have a not very supportive practice and you have to amount a lot of work to generate your salary, you're not going to have an excellent work-life balance irrespective of your career. I am in an academic practice and an uh, interventional cardiologist with six other people. So my call is one in six days and one in six weekends. So I have achieved excellent work-life balance with three kids and a surgeon husband. So, you know, uh, so the most important decision you need to make in your life with regards to whether you want to do EP or interventional or whatever it may be is whether you're passionate about it. If you are passionate about it, you will find the right job, the right spouse, the right way to make it happen. If you are not passionate about interventional cardiology or electrophysiology, it will be a drain. You will not be able to achieve work-life balance. The most important decision after, the first important decision I think will be uh, what you want to do, where is your passion? So that is going to require a lot of introspection personally. And once you have figured it out, don't think about work-life balance. You will achieve it, you will attain it. Just 
do what you are passionate about and then after during training or at the time of towards the end of your training make sure you look for several things in the job uh, place like are the uh, do you have a good support system do you have a mentor like figure who is going to support you through the initial years of your um, uh, attending or being a junior consultant or whatever so the most important decision to make is not interventional cardiology or ep actually it's about where you go and do your job excellent information thank you so much dr moran and for more videos like this just go go to our youtube channel fits undergo